So, so now we we step forward to 1994. Mm -hmm. You 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 win the national championship, and during that 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 journey, uh, you go you take the Arkansas to three Final Fours, thir what thirteen NCAA tournament appearances, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you really have enjoyed enormous success. And so, th there now comes a time and. In, in, in 2002, uh, you, 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 you stumble on, which is going to happen to us all. We know that in coaching. Uh, there's going to be a bump in the road somewhere along the line. And so after the, the University of Kentucky game, in the press conference, you made some uh, uh, mention of uh, may, maybe it was time for you to move on, and if they were willing to buy you out, you, you would leave. What, what, what precipitated all of that? Well, see, it all started in 2000. Mm -hmm. In 2000, the year 2000, uh, I won't mean to mention no name, but football coach in the AD, I mean, they beat Alabama. Of course, the football coach gets a hundred thousand dollars bonus, which is okay. I can win a national and I can do that. But it wasn't just a hundred thousand dollars. It was for ten years. That's a million dollars for one game. Hmm. And that that was one. So of he the got a hundred thousand dollar a year bonus for ten years. Woo! Then the next thing that came about is the fact that uh, you questioned those things, and hmm. and he was talking to me, and I'd ask Ray for raises for my assistants. Hmm. When the football part of it was just going out of sight, they weren't beating anybody. We're, we're taking care of all the bills. Mm -hmm. And I can't get any money for them. See, the only thing that everybody sees is only what they only know. Mm -hmm. But when you start talking about from, from that point, 2000, I, I didn't have a contract. They couldn't get me my contract, but yet the, the football coach had his contract, all signed and sealed. And I, I was working two years. With just their handshake and my agent saying, yeah, you got seven years, coach. But they haven't put it all together yet. And I'm asking for it every day. I, I need my contract. They don't, they don't understand. This is another thing. The shoe contract became very, I mean, it became a must. Why? Because when I started, the contract was just, he, wouldn't, he would not try to negotiate a contract for me. That, he says, is way from me. You negotiate any all of that. So my agent and got together, and we were with uh, Converse at the time. And Converse was paying me a hundred, almost three, four hundred thousand a year for perils. He he decided that hey, I'm going to Reebok, and when your contract is over, we're going to try to take care of you. But he didn't have no idea what I was making. So, so we can also give some money to football players and football coaches and track coach needs something. I said, but this is, this is not about that. I said, coach, I'm going down in my years. I don't need money taken from me. I need somebody to add something to me. Mm -hmm. He didn't like that at all. And for 17 years, I was when they list the highest paid employees in the state of Arkansas, it was me because of all the other things. Not what the university did for me, but I had a... I had a shoe contract, clothing contract, Probably TV some show, TV, TV. radio show. Uh, I had all that. And camp. Camp. Mm -hmm. and, and then the word slipped, that nigga making too much. Mm -hmm. Now my boss is saying this. Now we're talking about 2000. So the thing that happened that was really bad, but in that 2000 year, they had a, a football banquet the night of the day before an article came out that I call Wally Hall, you know, a redneck SOB. I call it to him. Yeah, he was a big editorial writer yeah. on the sport page, right, in Arkansas. In Arkansas. Arkansas. He turned it around and said, I'd call the people of Arkansas that. So instead of Frank coming over and saying, hey, coach, what's this all about? So I could tell him what happened. Mm -hmm. And Frank, we were talking about Frank Boyles, the athletic director. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of him or any of his people. Coming over and saying, well, what's, what's what this all about? Because, see, he, he knew how they treated me. Everybody knew. Mm -hmm. You know, Robert Starr, who was the other big guy, who, who, who died. The last thing on his tape recorder, we got to get rid of Richardson. That's the last thing this man is saying. As he goes to his deathbed. They got, a, they got a tape of it in court for me. 
So all these things were happening. Frank went to the newspaper at the banquet, the guy, and says to him, I want you to write an article describing Nolan calling these people of Arkansas an SOB, and we ought to be able to call him a nigger. So the guy says, well, coach, you want me to use this as a quote that you said this? Oh, no, no, keep me out of everything. He's, then the guy's telling me, and he said it in court. Not that he said it once. Coach, he said it three times. Not only did he say it, he said it loud enough that the kids, his best one of their best football players was Lucas, the wide out receiver. He was sitting at the next table. Everybody said, Frank, okay, cool. cool. Now, this is all happening in 2000. So now we go up to play in the, NC, uh, the SEC tournament, and we ain't going to the tournament. We got to win that tournament. Frank called the head of officials and said, if the goddamn Richardson say anything, give him a technical, run his ass out. The guy comes and tells me, Guthrie. He says, Nolan, what's going on with Frank? I said, what happened? He called. I said, he's trying to sabotage me. He said, because he's after your ass. Okay. He had already set up with an attorney to try to buy me out and pay me four years when he owed me seven. Because I had no contract. I only owe him four. So all this is behind the scene. He's working it. We win the damn tournament. We go four. We, we go four and on the ass. Now he's he, his hands are. He got to give me a contract. Now he gives me a seven year contract. The president. I had gone to the president and told him, "Look, I'll sue y'all if you take away shoes, radio, and all that to give to the other coaches because these are mine." He said, "No, coach. What we're gonna do? We're gonna give you everything. We're gonna we're gonna sign your contract. The total package. You ain't gonna have this from the school or this. No, everything under one umbrella." Okay, that 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 a total to one point one point zero three zero million dollars for seven years. That's you. And if something should happen, we'll pay you five hundred thousand a year. So we pay you off. That's what's in the contract. I said, all right, I, I I can deal with that. And you, we will renew it every year unless we don't come in and tell you why we didn't renew it. You have the right. To ask us why, and we'll explain it to you. That's fine. I said those are good. Well, that was in 2001 that I got the contract. Well, the next year I won 23 games, went to the NCAA. They renewed it. I had another seven years. 2002 comes around when I get fired. They only paid me one year of their contract. They are another coach. I mean, it's cheaper, cheaper deal to get rid of me, pay me the 500 each year for, for six years. That's what they pay, had to pay me. So, so everything, George, didn't happen by 2000. So what happened, by the time they wanted me to sign another contract before I went to play Kentucky that day, they wanted me to sign a contract that I would not say anything, I would not sue anybody, I would not do this, I would not do that. And, and I was through signing contracts with my agent. They said, you through with contracts. I said, well, why they, what? he said, they, they just try, they just, coach, they're going to do everything they can to make piss you off. I said, well, they're doing it. So when I left and we lost to Kentucky, the Kentucky press guy said, hey, coach, is your job in jeopardy? I said, well, I just, you know, 2001, just signed a contract. This is just 2002. I said, why would my job be in jeopardy? We lost the game. I said, hell, if, I, if I'm not doing my job, they need, to, they need to just pay my ass. That's what I told him. I said, they can pay my ass and I'll leave tomorrow. He says, well, can I? I said, no, I tell you what, come to the press conference so everybody can have it, just not you. I didn't want the Kentucky to have the exclusive. Mm -hmm. So I said it in the press conference. You know, you got a sound bite. They didn't, they didn't get it all because I had said the same thing in 1995. You know, after we won the national championship, they started raising hell, and I was, you know, we're getting beat a few games. And then we had the bullseye on. We, we were like 18 and 3, and they, ah, they can't do this. They don't want, want to do that. And that's the guy started writing. I said, Look, you guys have been on my ass for 17 years, and if you don't like what I'm doing, then they need to fire my ass, and I'll be out of here tomorrow. 
That's exactly what they wrote that in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. But of course, I'm still the national champion, getting a chance again. Yes. Everything was dropped. They showed that in court that hey, no one has said this before. He ain't said nothing any different than he said before. He said, yeah, but he followed up by saying, y'all hold on. It's going to be okay. He gave the fans hope. I said, well, <laughs> when you're losing, what, the, the only thing you can give them hope is win. Mm -hmm. you know? So when I said that, at that for that newspaper guy, I only said that not because I was ready to get fired. That's, you've got to get into me to tell me that that's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. That's what y'all wanted. I, all I did was serve your smoking gun. Mm -hmm. So, no, you referred a couple times to court. So, so uh, uh, obviously, you took you took the university and the athletic department to court for a lawsuit. And and, uh, and what was the final outcome of the, of the lawsuit? No. Well, the, the the deal was like the basketball deal to me. You know, the block charge. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, the block charge. You, the guy who made the free the shot. He gets the basket, and the guy that got ran over go down and shoot two free throws. Mm -hmm. and he makes two free throws, mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of a that's the bail. That's the way it works. Yeah. Well, they sued they sued me, so they didn't want to pay me my my six years, and I was asking for all my money. That's all. So what they did was, all right, you get what they promised, and they you leave this alone. So it's like you got this, you got this, y'all go. No court calls. 30 days back. That's what actually happened. So, so, so we, we, we waltz past the, 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 your days at, at the University of Arkansas. So, so what is life like now for, for Nolan Richardson as you've stepped away from, from coaching, uh, basically? I know you, you went back a little, you coached mm -hmm. the, the Mexican national team, you coached in the WNBA. What, what is, what is, uh, of Nolan Richardson's focus on life now? I've been focusing really on, on my charities. Uh, things that I, I did a little bit of as a coach, but now I get more time to focus on those who are less fortunate to be able to give back. You know, uh, I've received so much in the fields of the game and, and not so much myself giving back, but giving back in, in the name of young girl that, that was so close to me and that's my daughter Yvonne and so uh, I've, I've really turned most of all my focus into full-time uh, fountain uh, working the foundation. No, how, how do you want to be when the chapter closes on your life for that how is it that you want people to remember Nolan Richardson? Well one time George it's it's something that you might have said I know it's some things that Granny said. When you make the statement that it's not going to matter how many games you won when you reach the kingdom of heaven, if you should reach it, mm -hmm. gonna, it's not going to matter how many games you won, it's how many lives you touched. Mm -hmm. And that's important to me, how many lives have I touched. <clears throat> and, and, and some of the letters that I have received from some of my players over the years, those are some touching letters because I... I Sometimes you don't know that you touch those lives until uh, one or two of them write you back and say, Coach, thank you. This is what you did for me. You touch some lives when you do that. And, and if I can just do that, I don't care nothing about, uh, you know, I'm, I'm funny. They say the Hall of Fame, yeah. I think the most glory feeling that I've ever felt from any honor, 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 is a school being named after me. Mm -hmm. Now that, to me, is big. And where is that at, Nolan? El Paso. El Paso. Nolan Richardson Middle School. They, they, they named the school in 1998, uh, one of the brand new middle schools. And when I was asked, what would you like to have high school named at you, or would you love the elementary? And I told them middle school, because that's the age of the kids that you better catch them before they get to high school. So uh, uh, it's a beautiful school down in, in El Paso. To me, that was one of the greatest, greatest honors. I mean, I've received quite a few, and I've been honored and, and happy about them, but nothing like that. Nolan, we started out by uh, saying that what an extraordinary life that you've lived and 
and, and I, I suspect you still have a, a lot more to, to, to contribute in, in the years to come. And I, once again, I want to recommend to our viewers that if they, if they really want to make a deep dive into the life of, of uh, Nolan Richardson, to buy this book, uh, 40 Minutes of Hell. And and before we came on camera, I talked with Nolan and I said, I think it's time for another book that dives even deeper into into the life of Nolan Richardson. Nolan, you, you've been a, a great example to, to the black athletes and athletes in general, great example to those of us in the coaching profession. And, and so I'm going to take the liberty to, to thank you on behalf of all the athletes that you've coached, all the people that you've touched, all the coaches that you've inspired. And there are a lot of black coaches today at the collegiate level that wouldn't be where they were or where they are if it wasn't for Nolan Richardson. So partner, on behalf of everybody, thank you for making being a positive difference in our lives. Thank you very much, George. I appreciate that.